as we we look at the neurology of it, uh, I, you know, the prefrontal lobes and the prefrontal cortex is where all this abstract critical thinking goes. And, the, and, and in terms of comparing uh, human beings with uh, um, apes or any other type of, of uh, creature, we've got the largest mass of, of uh, prefrontal cortex in order to have that capacity to do the critical thinking. Then we have this emotional center in the limbic system, which um, one of the organs within the limbic system is the amygdala, which is often given the blame for, for being this, 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 this thing that creates the hijack. So when an emotion hits you, uh, it registers in your uh, limbic system. And by the way, a lot of the mammals have a pretty highly developed limbic system. So who's got a dog? Does everybody have a dog? Okay. So you take your dog and you go, shame on you, bad dog. And you can see your dog going through these emotions and everything. They experience emotions just like we do. And it's because now the limbic system takes over. And so that could be positive emotions, negative emotions, whatever. Happy. Dogs get really happy and they wag their tail and all this kind of stuff is coming from those emotional feelings here. And then you know, all this is supposed to work together. Uh, as one brain, but unfortunately, if you're not emotionally intelligent, it often, you, parts of your brain are sabotaging each other. Interesting thing about what, what they tell us about memory is that this part of your brain um, it, it will recall uh, information. It's a great information retrieval system. So that when you come to a class and you learn facts and you learn information, this is what's going to go back and retrieve the memory, the information memory, and maybe apply it to a current situation. The memory that's created through the limbic system is a different kind of memory. And as they, they try to understand it and measure it and so forth, um, a couple of differences. This is a, a memory that is encoded with the senses. So for instance, if you had an experience when you were young, and you even think of phobias uh, this way, but where something happened to you and you're in a really negative situation, and how you felt, uh, maybe it caused you to just shut down. You couldn't talk, you couldn't do anything. Maybe you were in a family where there was abuse. Uh, it could be just about anything. But it, with the memories that are associated with those experiences will come back and wash over you. So you could be in a similar situation today and the memory comes back and it almost takes you back to that feeling that you had when you were a child when that thing happened to you. And phobias often work that way that cause people to have un, uh, unreasonable fear of things because something triggers it and when this washes over them, the fear is so strong that they just can't go beyond it. They can't explain it. It's not logical, but it's powerful. So, so when you go back to a memory and it washes over you, it could be just about anything. Anger could come up. Fear could come up. Shame could come up. And now you're in what seems to be a similar situation. The memories are triggered. They're retrieved. They're washed over you. You feel the experience, and then it causes a certain type of behavior. And, and, and it's just very, very different. Now, the speed is another interesting thing. The speed with which these memories come up and wash over you and affect your behavior is less than a third the time that it takes to recall memory through this center. Which means that if now we're in a difficult situation and uh, you're yelling at me and whatever, you know, and if that triggers a response here, um, I'm going to feel that before I can even think about, uh, see, I just took a class in conflict management. What should I do? You know, and, 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 and this takes over. So I'm already reacting before I even have the opportunity to recall any information. I'm already there. And th that's why emotional intelligence is, is um, it, it's, a, it's a hard thing to develop if, you, if, you, if you're highly emotional and you have these kinds of things going on because how do you get it to change? You can only do it through practicing self-awareness. In other words, realizing that this is happening to me. I'm having an internal reaction because what happens is when it happens, we we look at the situation. It's happening because of the situation. It's happening because this person is yelling at me. It's happening. Because, no, it's not. It's happening because I'm having an internal reaction. That's why it's happening. And until you see that, you can't really do anything about it. You get swept away by the emotion itself.